Today on Bridges, we're going to talk about suffering and the questions that our suffering might prompt us to ask. I'm Monica Schmelzer, and I'm glad that you could join us today for Bridges. We're talking about suffering and the questions that we can all ask when we suffer and things that we wonder about why and how. And so we're going to open up that conversation today. And Eric Reed, who is the pastor at Journey Church in Lebanon, is my guest today. And it's so good to have you, Eric. Thank and you. I know that suffering isn't necessarily a really popular subject, but I felt was really necessary um, because we're gonna, at some point, we're all going to suffer and we will all have questions also. It's the elephant in the room. Yeah. We all know we're going to experience some form of it. Mm -hmm. And yet we don't like to talk about it very much. Yeah. And it, we don't wanna think about the suffering that might come. And for a lot of people, they don't wanna think about the suffering that has already happened. Or a lot of people are avoiding the uh, affliction and pain and suffering they're currently in. That's kind of really the three phases. It's, mm -hmm. You've either been in suffering, you're in suffering, or you're going to be in suffering. Yeah. And for some, it's all three and regularly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think that my heart in opening up the conversation is to really help us to see that suffering, even if it is a, a result of our own consequences, we can still repent from that and God yes. will still be gracious to help us. And since it is a part of everybody's life, it's like, well, let's talk about it and let's talk about how to do it in a way that grows our faith and helps us grow closer to God rather than be mad at God or walk away because I've seen that too. We don't want our suffering to alienate us from right. God, which it can do yeah. be because we don't understand. Right. We don't understand why our, a personal God who loves us who saved and redeemed us at the at the cost of the sinning of his son would therefore not pave the way, you know, glassy seas, yeah. you know, <laughs> in front of us to the end of our days. And that's, that's just, right. we don't understand it. And so we do often like children do. Children love to ask questions. I've got three. I've talked about Caleb a little <laughs> bit before here. Yes. My two daughters are nine and five. And I just remember all three of my children at young ages and still even, you know, as five-year-olds and nine-year-olds love the question, why? Mm -hmm. And I sort of think, I mean, every parent knows this, right? Absolutely. Why are we doing this? Why are we going there? And the reason children ask that is their little minds are inquisitive. They're trying to, they're trying to make sense mm -hmm. of things that they're observing. They're trying to make sense of things that they're experiencing. And I think one of the most popular questions that we still ask as adults is why? Yeah. And particularly when it comes to the subjects of pain and right. affliction and suffering and trying to wrap our head around God's presence, his role, what, what are we to ask? What are we not to ask of him to do? And, and so we ask the question, why? Mm -hmm. Very frequently in our faith. Yeah, and we do that in modern days and we're doing this in Bible days. I mean, I think this is a part of being human. It is. Why? How? We see the example of that mm -hmm. in John chapter nine. So in the gospel of John, uh, there's, I think, it, just a gracious gift that John gives us yes. in sharing the story mm -hmm. because we can identify with mm -hmm. it so much. Uh, Jesus and his disciples are, are going along the road and they come across a man who has been born blind. So this is all the man's ever known. Yep. He's, he was born blind. And you can say from the very beginning that the implication is because the world is broken, he, this man was born into a situation where blindness is a thing that happens, right? Mm -hmm. These bodies are defective and right. things happen to them. But as they pass by and they see the man born blind, the disciples ask him a question. Now, at this point in time, you have to keep in mind, the disciples have seen Jesus do incredible things. Absolutely. They've seen healings. They've heard him teach about the kingdom. They may not understand the full scope of what they will understand, right, after his death and resurrection. But they know they're walking here with the Messiah, or at least their understanding of who the Messiah is and what he's going to do. They know this is the one to ask. If mm -hmm. we're ever going to get a chance to ask, <laughs> he's the one. Yeah. And so they address him, Rabbi, which means teacher. Yeah. Right? We're, we're asking a question, teacher. We need to understand something. And here's their question. Who sinned? Who sinned? This man, the man born blind, or his parents that he was born blind? Mm -hmm. And that question fascinates me because it gives a little bit of an insight that we haven't changed in 2,000 years. We have not. We're still asking and thinking those same kinds of questions. And even if we're not brave enough to say it out loud, right? That's right. We have the question in our head of, 
how did this go haywire? Who did, who did something? Who did this? Who can I blame for this? Yeah. And like, if I can find someone to blame, then I could maybe be sure that it wouldn't happen again, right? That's right. If I could just be good enough and avoid that mistake. Yeah, and the question itself implies that maybe we're supposed to be free of these types of things yeah. unless we mess up. Right. So <laughs> the, disciples, the disciples are asking what a lot of us think but don't ask. That's right. Which you make a great point, that we think it but often don't say it. Mm -hmm. And they just say, teacher, rabbi, you know, Jesus, why is he blind? It, did, did he do something or did his parents do something? Because we know somebody did something. Exactly. <laughs> somebody did something. That's right. And so Jesus' answer, I mean, this is where as readers of Scripture, we should lean in and be like, well, the answer to this question is going to mean everything. Yep. You know, like, we're about to find out the, the, the answer to the old question, right? Who, why? Why, oh God? Why is there suffering? Why is there pain? And so Jesus' answer to them is, it was not that this man sinned. Okay, good. So it must have been his parents. <laughs> or his parents. So he undercuts both. It's mm -hmm. not that he sinned. It's not that his parents sinned, but that the works of God might do, be displayed in him. Mm -hmm. And that passage, as, as my family has walked through pain and suffering, and we've asked the question, why? This passage and what unfolds after it has been something we've grappled with. Jesus's answer is not this, the parents did something. It's not right. the man did something. It's that God is going to be glorified through this man's blindness. Yeah. Through this man's life, God's going to be exalted. Now, at this point, we haven't seen what's gonna happen, right. which is this man's gonna be healed from his blindness. And that healing is gonna give way to a whole opportunity for people to gather around. They're gonna be like, the man's gonna say, hey, I don't know, all I know is I was blind, yes, exactly. but now I see. <laughs> and that's the guy who did it. Uh, so we know in that way, God's gonna be glorified. But Monica, here's the, Here's what I've wrestled with a little bit, and, and, and think about this question. So was this man born blind and so that God would be glorified through it only in the day that he would be healed from it? Was it only the day he was going to be healed that God was going to get glory from the man's blindness? I don't think so. I don't think so either. I don't think so. Mm -mm. I, I know for a fact that God was glorified Amen. through the healing, mm -hmm. and it demonstrated who Jesus was mm -hmm. to people. But to say that was the only time his blindness brought, brought, brought glory to That's God, right. I don't think is the case. Because right. I think that sometimes our tendency, just as people, is we're really outcome and results focused. Yes. So for us, the outcome and the result is that this man got healed, he got healed. of blindness. That's right. But he glorified every single God every single day that that man lived. He was dependent upon That's God. Right. There's a lot of things that God was doing that yes. we may not see That's until right. we come across them here and find them getting healed. That's right. And so we rejoice at that outcome. Yes. But the honest, honestly, whenever in life that we tell the truth, that we obey God, right. every time we tell the truth, even if we get persecuted for that, or even if we lose a job because we're honest or something bad happens, right. we are glorifying God That's every right. single time. And we would say those things would be afflictions. Yes. It would be suffering. It'd right. be pain. To lose a job is a big deal. Absolutely. But to glorify God in and through that. That's right. That's what we're, that's what our suffering gives us the chance to do. Amen. To be faithful mm -hmm. is to stay the course, mm -hmm. but it's also to go, how can I glorify God in this. That's right. And so we believe this man glorified God through his pain yes. way before Jesus shows up That's as right. they pass by. That's right. And so for, for the question, why, uh, the disciples asked it, and, and we don't always know the why. See, here's the thing. The Bible doesn't tell us all the ways he glorified God. We just know Jesus said that he might be glorified. Amen. That's why the man's blind, that yes. God may be glorified. Mm -hmm. So there is a level of trust in God mm -hmm. that has to take place here that we're not the ones that can always point to how yeah. God's getting glory through the suffering. That's right. But we are trusting that there's no suffering. There's no senseless suffering in the kingdom of God. That's right. That, None. That all of it has value. He's working all things together mm -hmm. for the good of those who love him. Amen. Romans 8, 28. So we know there's no senseless suffering. Mm -hmm. We don't always get to know why God has allowed this particular pain to be used to glorify him in a particular way. That's right. So we, we focus on faithfulness. Yeah. Amen, amen. I have a brother that has special needs. He has Down syndrome. And for a long time, I prayed and believed for him to be healed of that. And God has seen him through health situations. However, he glorifies God yes. every single day with his life. Yes. 
whether or not that healing in the way that I was thinking ever comes to pass. That's right. And nobody did anything wrong That's in right. order for him to be born with those special needs. His life is a gift from God yes. and he glorifies God every single day. I yes. don't have all the answers to the questions. And that's why we trust until we, until we stand right. face to face before God. That's right. Yeah. Ravi Zachariah, the apologist, ph yeah. you know, uh, philosopher, he told a story, it's an Indian parable, and it, he was asked a question, Ravi Zacharias was, about, you know, why doesn't God stop the gunman from pulling the trigger? Mm. You know, why doesn't God stop the gunman? And Ravi Zacharias says, let me tell you an Indian parable that I think can help us to, to think about this rightly. Uh, there's a man who had a, a wild horse, and the wild horse got away. And his neighbor came over and he said, man, unfortunate, isn't it, that your, your horse ran away? Bad luck. And the guy said, good luck, bad luck. What, I, what do I know about that? The next day, the wild horse comes back, and he comes back with 20 other wild horses. <laughs> and the neighbor comes over and says, wow, what good luck it is. <laughs> your horse ran away, and he brought 20 back with him. Uh -huh. And the guy goes, good luck, bad luck. What, what do I know about that? Well, the next day, his son went out to tame one of the horses, and one of the horses kicked and broke his leg. And the neighbor comes over, and he's like, oh, bad luck. Your, uh, your, all those horses came back. <laughs> and, and, and he's like, well, good luck, bad luck. What, what do I know about that? The next day, a gang of band of thugs come by recruiting young men to their gang, but the young the son had a broke leg, and so he couldn't go. And the neighbor comes over and says, what good luck it is that your son's leg was broke. You know, now he was spared from going. And the, the point of the story is, from one event to the next, you can't tell whether, well, good, bad, what's going on here? And so Ravi Zacharias so says, maybe what we should do is we should trust God, and we should wait until we stand before him, and he can show us all he was doing, yeah. rather than us trying to put all the pieces together yeah, ourselves. Because we're just never going to figure out all the answers we to can. these questions. We have the questions. That's right. But we are never going to have all the answers this side of heaven. So right. I think that is such a great, great point. Yeah. We've got to take a break. We want you to stay with us. When you come back, we're going to continue to talk about suffering, the questions that we all have in the midst of that. You can purchase a copy of today's show for $15. Call us at 615-754-0039 or send a check to the address on the screen. Please mention the program number on the screen. For more information on a guest, visit our website, ctntv.org. Prayer changes things. If you need prayer, write to the address on the screen. Call 615-754-0039 or email prayer at ctntv.org. When it comes to suffering, most of us have questions like why and how and how will God or will God be glorified in all of that? So we're opening up that conversation today. And Eric Reed, who is the pastor at Journey Church in Lebanon, is my guest. And we're talking about that. And, you know, Eric, just before the break, we were talking about the questions we have, why, how, and then we think that we figured it out. You know, well, this happened for X, Y, Z reason. And then we get over to X, Y, Z reason and it falls apart. Yeah. And that's disappointing again. I have pretty much come to the conclusion, I think we will never get all of our questions answered. We try to connect the dots mm -hmm. because we want to give our suffering purpose and meaning. Yeah. And we have to trust God when he says, yeah. I am doing something in your suffering. There's no senseless suffering. But for you to try to connect all the dots, you're, we're not God. Amen. We're not God. You remember the story of Joseph when he just has one thing after the next happen. You know, uh, things that you would go, you know, Joseph didn't do anything wrong no. here. His brothers, mm -mm. you know, mm -mm. maybe he was naive to think that he could tell his brothers his dream <laughs> and they wouldn't be upset with him. I don't know. Maybe he did that wrong. Yeah. But, you know, he didn't do anything wrong, yet his brothers want to kill him. They, they downgrade that decision to sell him off. Yeah. They then tell dad they, they killed, he's, he's killed, you know, an animal got him. He actually gets sold off as a slave. He goes into the home of a man whom he serves faithfully. The man's wife accuses him of infidelity and approaching her when it was the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. He gets thrown into prison. He interprets a dream. They don't say that it's uh, Joseph that does it. He sits in prison for two more years. Yeah. We read that so quickly as if like these things were happening in a course of a few minutes. Right. Like this was 
years of real pain, mm -hmm. real suffering. He doesn't see all the things that God is doing in the midst of this. No. And yet what ends up happening in his story is he interprets another dream, gets put at the right hand of Pharaoh. The dream is there's going to be seven years of prosperity, seven years of famine. And in the midst of the famine, years later, here comes his family. He recognizes his brothers. They don't recognize him. There's a little bit of a cat and mouse <laughs> game, but at the end of the day, he has a chance to provide for his family who are on the outskirts of Egypt to make sure that they don't die in the famine. Well, when he finally reveals the whole, you know, aha moment to his brothers, he tells them what you intended for evil, God meant for good. Amen. In other words, God was fulfilling his promise to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob that I, am, I will build you into a great nation. What's hard to build these people into a great nation if they die of famine. That's right. So what happens? A series of events that happen that look on the surface that, that Joseph's mm. getting the bad end of a deal, yeah. that maybe he's been forgotten. Yeah. And in reality, God's at work the whole time. The whole time. The I, whole time. I even think about Joseph's dad for all those yes. years to think that you have a child that dies. Yes. To think that one of your children is dead when actually they are alive. They're alive. And going through various stages of trials, tests, and suffering. Grief. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I, all of that, and yet God's purposes were still fulfilled. And they I were, think the were. hope for us is that when we trust the Lord, we realize he's working in and through our suffering to accomplish things that we probably have no, no stinking idea. idea. He sees the 30,000 foot view for, you know, yeah. for lack of better words, and we're in the weeds. Yeah. So we can attempt from the weeds to connect the, the maybe the whys and the hows of what God is doing, but it's futile at the end. He yeah. alone can see the big picture, mm -hmm. which is why Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 has be, have become dear verses mm -hmm. to me and my family. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, yeah. with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, Amen. and He will make straight your paths. Amen. So think about what, that's a command with a promise. The command is trust in yep. the Lord with all of your heart. Put your full confidence in Him. And there's also, if you would, a counter command. And the opposite, the contrast, is don't lean on your own understanding. Yeah. Which is, mm -hmm. so here's what happens in the midst of the whys. What we're trying to do in the midst of our pain is we're trying to lean on our own understanding and making sense. We know God is good, so why is he allowing this to happen? Mm -hmm. Well, if I can connect the dots, it somehow exonerates God from any wrongdoing, and I can approve of my suffering, mm -hmm. and I can, I'll, I'll allow it, and I'll right. go through life. Right. It's like, it's not how it works. It's not how it works. And sometimes the thought is, well, this is, we can explain it to other people That's so right. that they won't be mad at God. Like, this That's all exactly happened. Right. So, so we want you not to be mad at God. Yeah, don't be mad at God. You know, because sometimes people look at our lives and think, but, but you're serving the Lord, so why is that happening? I've had people say that right. to me, and it's like, I have no explanation yeah. for any of that, but I rest in that I don't have to defend God. That's right. And I'm just trying to be as honest as I can. I have no idea yeah. why I'm going through some of the things I'm going through, but I know he's God. And I'm going to trust him. Amen. I'm going to trust him. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to lean on my own understanding mm -hmm. because it is so limited in its capacity. Instead, I'm going to, in all my ways, just keep acknowledging him. I'm going to mm -hmm. keep my eyes on him. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep pursuing him. And then there's a promise I'm going to cling to. He's going to make my path straight. Amen. Uh, you know, there's a place in our lives as Christians for lament. Mm -hmm. There's a place for heartache. There's a place, as we read in the Psalms, where we can say, how long, O oh Lord? Absolutely. Oh, God, have you, will you forgive me forever? Yeah. But if you read those laments, mm -hmm. what you will always find is on the heels of the question is a resolution yeah. to cling to his promises. That's right. But you are, but this I know, you are faithful. You will carry me. In other words, mm -hmm. it's okay to go to God with our real life hurts. Mm -hmm. To be a Christian in pain isn't to act as if there's not such a thing as pain. That's right. You know, we That's don't right. ignore pain. That's right. That doesn't make us Christian. Mm -mm. We can actually lament in a godly way by saying, God, why, why do I continue to experience this? Right. Why can't I... Why can't I stop going down that road? Or why is it that this health issue won't resolve? Mm -hmm. And yet, God, I know the ultimate promises. Amen. You're with me. You are faithful. You're going to carry me to the end and across the finish line. There is a day coming where these things will be no more. So even though I can lament in the present, I'm clinging to a hope in the future. He's going to make my path straight. Yeah, he is. He's and he's making past our path straight, even right now, even if we can't see it. And I found, Eric... Uh, 
You know, a lot of times in Christianity, there's all of this teaching about being joyful and not yes. complaining. And there is a type of complaining that goes nowhere right. that's not helpful. When you're talking about lamenting before the Lord, that is not complaining it's not complaint. at all. It's not a critical spirit. No, it's not questioning God. I have found that when I just go to the Lord very honestly, and sometimes it's just in tears, it's not with a lot of words. That's right. It can just be, God, I'm really brokenhearted over this family situation. I'm brokenhearted over this prodigal, over this person that's struggling yes. with whatever. And I'm hurting and I wish it wasn't this way. And it's taking a really long time. But by the end of that, he says he's close to the brokenhearted. So that's I right. experience his closeness and his nearness. And I'm able to remind myself of what I already know. He collects our tears in his bottle, right? There's no... There's no tears that he's not going to redeem ultimately, but it's right and it's good to weep with those who weep, Amen. to mourn with those who mourn. Mm -hmm. Jesus, God in the flesh, wept and yes. had compassion and was moved in his spirit yes. at the funeral of Lazarus. By the way, a funeral he was about to interrupt <laughs> by raising him right. up. And he still cried. And he still cried because that's who God is. Mm -hmm. and, and we're made in the image of God, which means as Christians, we don't have to put on this facade or veneer nope. of, oh, everything's all hunky-dory. It's okay to be, it's okay to mourn. It's okay to lament. Mm -hmm. It's even okay to ask questions like, why God? Mm -hmm. It's okay, but the posture of our heart is the most important thing. Absolutely. Trusting him, even though we don't know why, not pretending like we have to connect the dots in order to make sense of our suffering. Mm -hmm. It's trusting. At the end of the day, it's, it's submitting and resolving yeah. ourselves to say, you alone, oh Lord, know. You alone know. That's right. But you're good. That's right. You know, That's and right. you're faithful. Yes. And you're going to make my pastor. I'm just going to keep my eyes on you. Keep yeah. your eyes on him. Keep looking to him in all your ways. Keep acknowledging him. And he'll make your path straight. So for me, that's been a roadmap. That's been, that's been a game plan for our family as we've endured pain with our son's health issues. Mm -hmm. And as we live in the everydayness of that, yeah. every day is trust the Lord, Eric. Amen. Trust the Lord. And, and, and that is what it is every day for everybody. And for some everybody. of us in larger and in smaller amounts on differing days, because the, the, the one that wants to pretend like everything is okay, because we think that that's the Christian thing to do. What we cheat ourselves of is the closeness and the comfort of God. Amen. Uh, and being able to have real community. Yeah. And there's a price to pay for lying yeah. to ourselves. I, I, you know what I mean? Like I do. everything is okay. It's, We're all happy Christians. It's self-deception. Yeah. It, and it's a forfeiting point, of joy. Yeah. At some point. We're probably going to crash and burn. That probably can't continue for everything. That everything is okay. Everything is okay. At some point, there has to be something authentic and genuine. And when we let that defense down before the Lord and invite him into yeah. our personal space, there is a closeness that comes from that kind of a sharing that I just don't even know how to describe. I agree. And I think it also bears witness to the world. Yes. That there, the difference between us and the unbelieving world isn't that we're exempt from trials. No. It's that we walk in faithfulness with the Lord mm -hmm. in the midst of our trials. Yeah. And so we actually rob the world of seeing the hope found yes. in Christ when we put the veneer yes. on that says, oh, no, pain's not painful. Right. Hurt, hurt's not really hurtful. It's like, no, it is. And it's yeah. okay to say it is. Yeah. It's also okay in the midst of that to say, but my joy my joy Amen. is in Christ Amen. and in all that he is being to us right mm -hmm. now and all the grace he is supplying. We don't know the ultimate outcome of this circumstance, but we know the Lord does and we trust Amen. him. Yes. So we're not going to, we're not going to play the game of let's guess what God's doing and why this has been allowed. Let's just trust him yeah. and not, and let's just keep acknowledging him and let's not try to make sense of all this in our heads. We'll just keep our eyes on Jesus right. and we'll trust and cling to the promises that await us, Amen. which is he'll walk with us in these trials and there's a day coming where they will be no more. And, and in that we say, come Lord Jesus, come. Isn't that yeah, even so Lord Jesus <laughs> yeah. come quickly. I mean, yeah. I long for that day to be in his presence right. where there's no more death, sickness, tears. I long for that. And Christ bought that future for us. Amen. Amen. And, and that is going to be, that is going to be a wonderful day for all of us. And what you're saying really in the meantime is that we trust him. Yes. And, and I liked so much what you said about, we don't need to rob the world yes. of the opportunity to see 
us suffer yeah. and trust Christ. To suffer faithfully. You know, I had, I shared a few months ago at a women's meeting that about three years ago now, my very best friend for 18 years uh, tragically took her life. Mm. Eric, I have no answers for that. Yeah, that's right. This, is, this was a Jesus-loving girl. Yeah. She had a wonderful husband that I know she loved and two beautiful children that she was very committed to. Yeah. There's a lot of pain in that. Yeah. And I have to, and it's still, it's heartbreaking to me. There's not a day that goes by that I don't think of my sweet friend, right. that I don't wish that it could have been different. I had so many, like, if I had been a better friend, you know, if I had sent one more text, right. if I had called, and I've had to, it's not that I don't have those questions, it's that I trust him in yep. spite of those questions. We have to take every thought captive at some Amen. point. Amen. We have to take every thought captive at some point because the enemy will love to prey on what we don't know. That's right. Um, mm. and, and he'll try to fill the narrative in with something, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so this is where there's a time where we have to go, Lord, I don't know the answer. Right. I don't get it. It crushes me to under, try to uh, make sense of why these things happen That's in this right. life. But I know you are God. Yeah. yeah. And I trust you. Yeah. I asked him for grace to be okay with not knowing. Yeah. And every day he gives me that in different ways. That's right. And that's what this, it's like you said, trust. Trust. It, trust. That's the root foundation is to trust him. Because at the end of the day, I have to trust that he sees the big picture. Yeah. It's, it, I don't trust him because I see the big picture. That's right. That's called, that's called sight. <laughs> right. Walking by <laughs> faith and not by sight that's right. means I am putting the trust in that's him right. seeing the big picture. And that trust brings him glory. It does. That brings him glory. It he can look at us and he can say, oh, they're trusting. They don't see what I see, but they're trusting. They, they believe yet don't see. That's right. They, they are clinging to me, though they don't know what, what tomorrow holds. That's right. But because they trust that I do know what tomorrow That's holds. That's exactly right. Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you for it's having me. It's been good to have you. It's been so good to have you with us today. Just trust him. We're out of time. We've got to go. But we say God bless you. For more information on a guest, visit our website, ctntv.org. Don't give in. God's word says you're an overcomer. If you hadn't done blah, 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 this wouldn't have happened. And let me say this to you. If you think that you are in a mess of your own making, you are still an overcomer. When that temptation comes, you want to make sure that you are dressed for battle. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. It takes training. It takes discipline. And so when you're fighting that good fight of the faith, you take your story, whatever it is, and you saturate it in faith and you fight for it. Visit monicaschmelter.com to schedule Monica to speak at your next event. Log on to www.ctntv.org where you can make a prayer request, view our program guide, see who's on bridges, or even watch one of Monica's latest teachings. Log on to www.ctntv.org.